Hi, good morning, good afternoon. How are you? Nice? Sleeping? After coffee? Okay. Okay, so uh, in the next 25 minutes, we will be talking about uh, Kafka rebalances and uh, how we can avoid them, how we can uh, uh, skip some uh, bad influences of them. And uh, before we start, I want to know how many of you already working with Kafka today? Good, okay, awesome. And uh, uh, you faced already some Kafka rebalances? Rebalance storm, how many of you do know? Okay, okay, so now we will start and uh, I hope for some of you it will save uh, time and work uh, already from uh, tomorrow, from Sunday actually, and for others uh, in the future. Uh, before we start, I want to tell you that uh, how Kafka rebalance looks like that depends on who is looking on it. So when clients looking on it, uh, they usually see like no data and the managers really don't like it at all. Uh, colleagues that are not regularly working with Kafka also uh, cannot understand what is going on here. And me, I see some robot playing with cards meanwhile. So uh, I'm principal software engineer and technical lead of the CSI platform group at Akamai. Um, I'm Kafka development specialist, kind of, uh, working uh, on uh, many different projects uh, within CSI and uh, helping people to deal with Kafka joined Takama in 2020 and I started my career as a development intern in Sump Labs Israel in 2007. Our agenda for today. We will do some short introduction uh, just to understand what is Akamai, what is CSI and why we need Kafka. Then we will move to exploring Kafka rebalances uh, we will see what triggers it and why it can be evil. Uh, we will see some strategies uh, to reduce influence of it on our system and we will see how we can optimize it and how we can choose right assignment strategy to make less evil uh, results. Okay, Akamai is the largest uh, content delivery network uh, services uh, provider in the world that also offers cloud and uh, security services. We have more than 350,000 uh, servers all over the world and uh, around 30% of the internet traffic are going through our servers. So a lot of data. We power and protect life online. Some of this traffic is, uh, as usual, malicious traffic, and uh, we want to, to protect our clients. Uh, so uh, in CSI, we maintain an uh, ongoing development uh, platform uh, that collect all of these malicious events, do some analyze, uh, distill it, and uh, actually it's a data platform for all the uh, real-time and not real-time uh, security products of Akamai, not all products, but uh, a lot of them. Uh, we have around 20 gigabyte uh, data in second, every second, every day, and uh, processing around one billion row uh, data events per minute. Uh, very impressive. This is how our uh, architecture uh, looks like, in some uh, simplified one. Uh, what is interesting here is we have a lot of applications, services in our pipeline, and uh, in each step of uh, getting data and analyzing data, we usually write our results to the blob storage and all the metadata to Kafka. Uh, so uh, hundreds of new Kafka records every second. Uh, each Kafka topic we handle, usually each application has its dedicated Kafka topic and each Kafka topic uh, has up to 300 partitions, depends on stage. 
Uh, applications are highly distributed. Uh, we have uh, usually starting with 50 pods, and uh, when traffic is really high, we go up to 300 pods. Uh, pods are automatically scaled up and down. What also important here is that each application is a consumer group, Kafka consumer group, while each pod is consumer within this uh, uh, consumer group. So when at first we deployed this part to production that you can see, Starlord and Diondo, uh, we were also impressed because uh, it took around one hour to Yondu to start processing data. It was really surprising because on our performance environment we had like five pods and they were starting in no time, like one minute or two minutes and uh, starting processing data. But on production we had to start with already 50 pods and the whole picture was really different. It took us, I don't know, a few weeks, I think, to, to understand what is going on. We checked our settings of production. We was checking all our uh, application configuration, trying to understand why it takes so long to start consuming data. And uh, then we realized that what is going on, it's Kafka rebalances. And actually, it was not one Kafka rebalance, not two, not three, but many of them, it was Kafka rebalance storm. And during this storm, our applications were not able even to start consuming data. And after we resolved it and the application started to run, we have some data spikes. And again, there were uh, Kafka rebalances storms and the application was not running. It was running, but was not consuming and processing data for hours. Uh, not nice at all. Uh, so Kafka rebalance. Kafka changes the ownership of partitions within consumer on some events. The process when Kafka changes uh, partition uh, assignments is called a rebalance. Uh, let's assume we have only two consumers and they have like six partitions in common, each one gets three. Then something happens and Kafka decided it needs to reassign partition. So all consumers load their partitions. They cannot consume anymore. They should wait while Kafka calculating a new assignment. And then it's reassigned all nice. They can uh, start working again. But again, something can happen. And uh, again, all partitions are reworked and uh, recalculations and back. And when it is happens one after another in a loop, we call it rebalance storm. So uh, let's take a deep dive to Kafka rebalance. We have on each uh, consumer group, we have what is called a consumer coordinator, group coordinator. And once it uh, detects trigger for rebalance, it begins. Now it depends if our rebalance is cooperative or not. And we will talk more about it later. But if the rebalance is not cooperative, we are on the dark side of the picture. All consumers pause consumptions, no data consuming, no data processing, all the world going to, to the end. All partitions are evoked. Kafka coordinator uh, um, calculate new assignments. It returns partitions to the uh, uh, consumers and then consumers can resume consumption. When we are on cooperative, it's a little bit better because a coordinator will first calculate all required changes and then it will perform changes only for consumers where it is really required. So not all consumers will be influenced. Still, you will see some influence on your system during this rebalance because, again, some consumers will lost their partitions and others will get new partitions. There will be some changes, but not as dramatic as a non-cooperative where we are stopping consuming at all. What triggers? Why, why should this happen? Uh, the first one is topic partition or partition replica count changes. If you add more partition or if you, uh, the second one not really happens, but 
Uh, usually, if you have new partitions on your topic, you need to assign them, so rebalance is required. Everything is clear here. Same if, uh, if the count of partitions replica changes again, uh, Kafka needs to reassign them. Uh, consumer group properties are changed. Also, some, some changes. Uh, I think most of the cases it will be even application change. So, you know, for your application, nothing critical because you know you are going to do this. You can prepare yourself, you can prepare your system. It's not something unexpected. The third one is consumer joins or leaves a, gr a group. Why consumer will join or leave the group? There is a lot of reason for this. Uh, when you are running like us, uh, each pod of application is a separate consumer. You have same reason for pods to join or leave, uh, scale up and down, uh, Kubernetes uh, do some uh, environment work and move pods from node to node. Uh, application or pods can restart also eventually. And also at the beginning, when application just starting, usually you not starting all the pods at the same time. It takes some time for Kubernetes to, to gather all the resources and to start all pods, especially when you not running with five or 10 pods, but when you are running with 50 or, or 100 or foot or even more, yeah, it will take some time. And each time new pod will start, it will trigger new rebalance. If you have network issues, or if your system is really complicated, or you messed up something in your configuration, it can last forever. You can have a rebalance storm that started and ends, and you can try restart your application, and again, not all pods start at the same time. Never ending story, not nice. Uh, impacts, yeah. Uh, on our case, as I told you, the first application we faced it was uh, Yondu, just the name, doesn't matter. But uh, what we saw that the lag is continuously growing and we just stop committed new messages, means no data processing at all. Uh, it was in our case, total disaster, but uh, Usually you have some increased latency while rebalancing. You have a potential data duplication if you are not managing your offsets correctly. You can uh, lose some data or in any case, yes, the last one, reducing throughput will happen no matter, no, man, no matter what you do. When Kafka rebalances, your application will change their throughput, it will be reduced. How we can minimize rebalance impact? To minimize rebalance impact, a Kafka clients suggest us to implement consumer rebalance listener. It's an interface that you can add to your consumer. Uh, for example, if you implement on partitions revoked, it will catch the event of partitions revoking during the rebalance. So you can, for example, commit here offsets of the message you already consumed and finished uh, working on them, or you can notify your system, add alerts, whatever makes sense on your case. Also, you can implement on partition assigned to start your consumers properly. Maybe you want to update, again, the beginning of the offsets you will start to consume from. All of this usually will help you to, to avoid data loss and data duplications. Disclaimers. Triggers, <clears throat> it can be triggered only during polling, meaning when your consumer is active because it's part of it. And it can prevent rebalancing, but it can minimize its impact, again, significantly. You can avoid here data loss and data duplication, that's a lot. Okay, what else we can do? When we are talking about skipping Kafka rebalances, it's usually skipping consumers moving from or to the group. To the group, usually we will not want to, to, to skip this. 
but we won't reduce the uh, amount of times when a consumer group coordinator thinks that the consumer is not active anymore and should be removed from the group. Uh, let's see a few configurations we can uh, use uh, for this. The first one is max poll interval. A coordinator assumes that consumer is alive and working only while it is consuming, when, while it is polling. So uh, if, you, uh, if you pass this time out between two polls, con uh, group coordinator will decide that this consumer is already dead and will remove it from the group. To avoid it, it's uh, the tip is to use, uh, to set this value to the maximum time of your data processing. If between two consequent poles of the consumer you do some heavy data processing, you need to check the time it takes and set this property accordingly. The default is five minutes, yes? So until you are processing less than five minutes, you cannot touch it. Uh, session timeout. This timeout determi determines for coordinator for how long to wait for a, heart uh, for a heartbeat from consumer. Each consumer, when it starts, starts also some thread that send every, uh, after some time uh, heartbeats to consumer. If it doesn't send or if coordinator doesn't get them, here we are talking about uh, network issues, for example. Coordinator will decide that this consumer is not active anymore and will remove it from the group. So we will have a rebalance, not nice. Um, also, another option when consumer can stop starting this is because your application is restarting or pod is restarting. In that case, usually you will want uh, to consumer to remain active because, you know, it's just going for the break, yeah? <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Uh, so uh, our suggestion and what we do is setting this time to the time it takes to our application to restart. A uh, heartbeat interval is a frequency of heartbeats that con consumer is sending to coordinator. Uh, tip is from Kafka documentation, one third of session timeout uh, should be the best option for, for your performance. You don't want to send them too often and you also uh, don't want to do this interval too long and to miss the time when, when some consumer really is not uh, active anymore. <sighs> Another one, it's group instance ID. It gives consumer instance unique ID like name like passport number by this group coordinator will know, will know that this is a consumer and even if this consumer disappear and another one will came with same number group coordinator will say okay i know you i know you it was here keep your partitions continue working if you are not setting this value consumer coordinator will give to each new consumer it see new random number. Okay, so even if you're running on same pod and for some reason you need to destroy your consumer and create a new one, even application was not restarting and nothing happened, just you decided you need to destroy and create new consumer. By consumer group, it will look like a new consumer and uh, the whole story with the rebalances Twice, by the way, by the way, first one because the old one left the group, and at second time because the new one joined the group. Not nice. Not something you want to see. Uh, we are using our Kubernetes pod names as this ID, and for us it works uh, really good because um, same pod, same application, meaning same consumer. No need to to rebalance anything. Uh, and the last one is assignment strategy. This is a protocol that Kafka coordinator will use to distribute uh, partitions. And uh, in a moment we will see how it influences the whole story of the rebalancing. Uh, the Kafka today uh, introduced us four different assignment strategies. Uh, we will go through and I will try to explain you how you can 
pick one and not another and uh, whatever. Let's start with partition assignments. The first one we were talking about is round robin assignment. It's called round robin assigner. You can, uh, before it, yeah, here, you can see partition assignment strategy is the name of the property. Uh, the property is list, and in this list, you can mention all the um, assignment strategies you want coordinator to use. Uh, first one will be the first one to catch, and first one he cannot catch for some reason, he will try the second one. Uh, so, uh, back, round robin assigner, assign partitions to consumer in, in round robin fashion, how it looks like. Assume we have six partitions, three consumers, round robin, P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, each consumer got exactly two partitions, very nice, one failed or leaves for some reason, doesn't matter, reassign. All partitions taken, coordinator do some magic, that, and again, P0 go to C1, P1 to C3, ta ta ta, all assignments changed by the way, so even if you're running same consumer, okay, or on your own application nothing changed or nothing happened, all, uh, sorry, all the cash will be lost on consumer side, it will start from the beginning. And when the new one, again, we reassigned, and again, everything changed. What is good about this assignment strategy? It is good balanced by distribution, yes. It's always uh, gives one to you, one to you, one to you, one to you. So there is no one that gets 10 while another gets only two, for example. And... Um, uh, also, it's really predictable, yeah? You know exactly what consumer will have, each, what partitions. Uh, I don't know why you need this. Nice. In one minute. <laughs> we have more uh, uh, a range assigner, a sticky assigner, and cooperative sticky assigner. If you don't want, if you don't know what to choose, choose cooperative. The default is sticky. But you will want to choose cooperative, especially when you have many partitions, many consumers, like in our case. In some cases, in some cases, in our case specifically, we have one application with really, really heavy calculations and uh, long time data processing. Cooperative was not doing the, the best job. We come back to, to sticky. It was better. Again, because of the time the, it takes between consequent polls. So, put your timeouts, as it, as it mentioned before, uh, for the session timeout, the time it takes you to restart, poll according to the time it takes you to process the data, for uh, assignment strategy, pick cooperative, on small systems, pick a uh, round robin, and uh, I think that's all. Sorry. <laughs>